so what are the sections we are left with everyone can you see uh, i think 132 133 135 and 137 do you remember yesterday we have written the whole 135 which was very yes, important now let us proceed with the sections and let us proceed with the remaining topics right okay now let us first complete the 132 everyone so that you can all understand what 132 is all about 132 actually it's a very huge section but uh, 132 is not fully in your portion only some part of the 132 is there in your portion. So let us complete 132. First of all, uh, are you able to see Umel? What do you mean by 132? 132 is section number 132 is NFRA. What is the name you are able to see? NFRA. NFRA. So everyone, please try to understand first what is the history and background of the NFRA so that you can understand what is the actual purpose also behind the NFRA. Now see, when we talk about the, when we, Talk about the NFRA everyone, try to understand. NFRA means uh, National Financial Reporting Authority. What does that mean? National Financial Reporting Authority. Now, when we talk about the NFRA, the first thing you have to understand is... Wait, 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 wait. wait. Listen. Is my voice getting louder everyone? I mean, or is it fine? Is my voice too loud or is it fine? Fine, sir. It's fine, huh? no problem with the voice. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, what do you mean by NFRA? Everyone try to understand. NFRA is basically a national financial reporting authority. What is the meaning? National financial reporting authority. Now, if you want to know about the NFRA, there is a brief history you should know first. Now, let's say, for example, accounting standards and standards on auditing. I hope you all might be knowing that the accounting standards and standards on auditing both are made by whom? ICI, Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. Right? Now, Institute of Chartered Accountants of India makes it and it sends it to the whom? MCA, Ministry of Corporate Affairs. It sends it to where am I? Ministry of Corporate Affairs. Right? Now, when it gives it to the Ministry of Corporate Affairs, so Ministry of Corporate Affairs after that notifies it and that is how we people learn the standards and standards on auditing, right? Now what happened between ICAI and between MCA, there is one new authority has been made that is called NFRA. Now ICAI directly does not do any contact with whom? Tell me. ICA directly does not do any contact with whom? With the and with the MCA anymore. So ICA now sends all its suggestions to whom? NFRA. NFRA reviews those suggestions. And if the NFRA thinks that if those suggestions are valid and they are required to be updated or they are valid amendments and all. Then NFRA will tell it to whom? MCA. What is MCA, Ma? Ministry of Corporate Affairs. Is it clear, Ma? So earlier, what ICA used to do directly with the MCA, now between ICAI and MCA, which authority has come, Ma? NFRA. NFRA, National Financial Reporting Authority. Is it clear? And one more thing. First of all, chartered accountants in practice, when you will become a CA, you will have the two options. One is you can go for an employment and second one is you can establish your practice. Chartered accountants in practice generally get punished by whom? Generally get punished by ICAI if the CAs in practice will do something wrong. Am I correct? But nowadays what is happening, Amma? Nowadays what is happening? Chartered accountants in practice are nowadays getting punished by whom? They are nowadays getting punished by NFRA. What is the name of the authority? NFRA. So CAs are no longer, CAs are no longer going to get punished by the ICA. They are nowadays getting punished by whom? NFRA. Now what does the what is the meaning of that? The ICAI's role in the NFRA. government, ICAI's role in the government is getting lower day by day, and NFRA is overcoming whom? I say. So who is overcoming whom everyone? 
NFRA is overcoming whom everyone? I say. Is it clear to all of you? Yes or no? So NFRA is overcoming whom? I say. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, what is happening? What I say used to do, now all those functions are NFRA do. And this is the new section. That's why the section number is 132. Is it clear? So this is a brief introduction you should know about the NFRA. So you can see that if this is ICA and this is MCA. Between ICA and NCA, who is the filter now? NFRA. NFRA. Whatever ICA would like to tell to the MCA, it has to go via whom? NFRA. NFRA. Clear, Amma? Now, yes. what is NFRA? Read it, Amma. What is the point written in the NFRA? NFRA is a what? NFRA, it is an institution or an authority which is basically going to monitor professional services of the auditor in terms of quality review of the services rendered. What does that mean? It is that kind of institute which is now going to monitor professional services of whom? Auditor in terms of quality review of the services rendered. Are the chartered accountants providing the better quality of services or not? Are we providing the good qualities in the market or not? Instead of ICA, now who is watching more? NFRA. Mm -hmm. Actually, I say, I'm not saying that ICA complete rule has been reduced. ICA is also still our mother body. ICAI is still our which body, Emma? Mother body. But who has taken over the ICA's role to the another level? NFRA. NFRA, right? Now, what is the constitution of NFRA? What is basically an NFRA? NFRA is basically constituted by the which government? Central, Central government. government. To approve for the matters relating to which standards and which standards are accounting standards and auditing standards. So now when the ICA creates any accounting standard and when the ICA creates any auditing standard, it first goes in the basket of whom? NFRA. Once the NFRA approves it, after that it goes in the basket of whom? ICA. MCA, Ministry of Corporate Affairs. Once the NFRA approves, then only our standards on auditing and accounting standards will be approved by whom? Ministry of Corporate Affairs. So between Ministry of Corporate Affairs and between ICA, who is the new party came? NFRA. That is what section number 32, 132. Now, who is NFRA? That I already told you. Now the question arises that NFRA has how many people? In the NFRA total, 16 members are there, Amma. How many members are there? 16 members. Now, what are those 16 members? Who is the first person? Chairperson. Now, who is the chairperson? A chairperson of the NFRA should be a person of eminent personality and he should have an expert knowledge in accounting field, auditing field, finance field and law field. Did you understand? Who is going to be the chairperson? The one chairperson of the NFRA is going to be the eminent person who is expert in accounts, auditing, Finance and law. Now, my question is very simple, Amma. Basically, NFRA is checking our accounting standards and auditing standards. Am I correct? Yes or no? Yes. So, tell me one thing. Do we need a person who have the knowledge of accounting and auditing or who does not have the knowledge of accounting and auditing? If I will, if I will, if I am getting checked by someone, the person who is checking me should be capable of understanding what do you mean by accounting standards and auditing standards. Am I correct? So the chairperson should be expert in the which knowledge, Amma? Accounting, auditing, finance and law. So this is called chairperson of NFRA. Along, yeah, along with that, how many members do we have? We have members not exceeding 15. Not exceeding 15. So you cannot have more than 15 members in the NFRA. So 15 members plus one chairperson total put together, how many? 16 members. Am I clear, Amma? Now, yeah. next point. What are those 15 members? In the 15 members, some are part-time members and some are what? Full-time members. Full Did you get the point? In the 16 members, some are what? Part-time and some are what? Full-time members. Is it clear, Amma? Yes. yes. So, in total, 16 members are there. Now, next point. Sir, what these members are going to do? These, all the 16 members have to file one declaration of independence what is the meaning of that the all members of nfra should be independent of the companies to whom they are going to evaluate let me give you a very simple example Amma. let's say for example uh 
I am the auditor of one company. Listen to this example, everyone carefully. Say, for example, I am the auditor of one company, Amma. And in that company, my wife is the CEO. Tell me, will I be partial or impartial? I am the auditor of one company. And in that company, my wife is working as a CEO. Am I going to be partial towards my company? Towards that company or to, I will be impartial? I will be partial. partial. Yes, because my wife is working in that company. Am I correct? The same is a case here. They do not want the people in NFRA who are interested people, who are partial people, who are biased people. We need a which people? Dependent okay. people or independent people? Independent. independent people. So all the chairman and the, all the members of NFRA has to give a declaration of independence. Ki we are independent. We have no connection with anybody. Am I crystal clear, Amma? Is it clear to all of you? Yes. Now, what is the declaration under the independence? They are saying they do not have any conflict of interest and they have no relationship with the audit firms, including related consultancy firms. Let's say, for example, let's say, for example, uh, my case is in the front of NFRA. Grover and Associates is my firm name. So my Grover and Associates is the case which who is handling NFRA. One of the member of NFRA is also my partner. Now tell me whether that person will be partial or impartial. Are you understanding Umil? Right or not? So Umil, you are my partner. You are my partner in the Grover and Associates. Clear? You are also one of the member in NFRA. Clear? So when our firm case will come in front of you to handle it, will you be a little bit partial or not? Tell me frankly. Yes, sir. Then in that case, don't you think that if you will show partiality, there will be some biasness? Am I correct or not? Yes, sir. Yes, but do we want that biasness or we don't want that? We don't want that. That's the reason the NFRA members have to be dependent or they have to be independent. Independent persons. Are you getting the point? Next yes, point. Sir. Now, till what time they have to maintain the independence? They have to maintain the independence during what? course of employment and remember one thing after leaving nfra also for the next two years you are not allowed to have any kind of professional relationship with that audit firm whose case the nfra was handling am i clear amma yes, sir. let's say for example umel you are one of the member of nfra clear now you are handling my case grover and associates am i clear amma now you handled my case in the year 2021. Which year you handled my case? 2021. 2022 you retired. 2022 you retired as a one of the retired person from the NFRA. Am I correct, Amma? Till 2024. Till 2024. You are not allowed to have any connection with the Grover and Associates. It means you don't have to be independent only during the employment. You have to show that independence even after retiring from a NFRA. Is it clear, Amma? Yes, sir. So when did you retire? 2022. Till what time you are not going to have any kind of professional relationship with my firm? For the next what? During Two years. So tell me. Employment. Yeah. So during the course of employment, so you have to be independent even for the next how many years? Two for years. Yes. For after seizing the office. Even if you left NFRA, you are not supposed to be any kind of relationship with my firm. Is it clear, Amma? Yes. Now, what are the powers of NFRA? Everyone try to understand. First of all, tell me everyone. Did you all understand about the NFRA so far? Whatever I said. Please let me know. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Everything about the NFRA you understood? Yes. Now, what are the powers of NFRA? Try to understand. The first power of NFRA is to investigate. Now, what do you mean by investigate? Now, listen to this, Amma. Do you all remember, Umel, I gave you the meaning of Suomoto. What do you mean by Suomoto? Yes, on its own. Suomoto yeah. means on its own. Now, if the NFRA on its own comes to know that my audit firm 
my audit firm has done any professional misconduct what do you mean by professional misconduct amma a right thing or a wrong thing wrong thing wrong thing if the nfra on its own comes to know that ki rohit grover sir as a practicing chartered accountant or grover sir's firm grover and associate has done any kind of professional misconduct or somebody has made a complaint against me who is that somebody central government if the central government has made any complaint to the nfra ki grover and associate is doing something wrong or nfra so moto comes to know that ki grover and associate is has done any professional misconduct then in that case nfra will start investigation on my firm am i correct ma so chartered accountants in practice are free bird or they are not the free bird they are not the free bird who is always watching them tell me amma who is always watching the cas okay uh, who is watching nfr is always watching us am i correct amma yes so tell me what is the first power read the first power power to investigate nfr whether suo moto or on a complaint which is made by whom central government that member of ici or the firm of chartered accountants committed any professional misconduct or other misconduct then who will start doing the investigation on you everyone nfra will start doing the investigation on you and remember if the nfra has started the investigation any other institute can do the investigation or you can't do the investigation you can't do the investigation remember one thing icai cannot say that no 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 these are my chartered accountants these are my people so let us do the investigation no if the nfra has already started the investigation anybody else is allowed to do the investigation or not allowed to do the investigation not allowed so who can do the investigation nfra once the nfra has started the investigation anybody else is allowed to interfere or not allowed everyone write in the comment box anybody allowed or not allowed anybody else is not allowed because nfra is more powerful than whom i say did you all understand the concept which i am saying yes sir yes amma now this is the power number 1 of whom nfra what is the next power power of which court amma civil court now nfra is like a civil court nfra is like a civil court now tell me amma what happens in the court in the court whether the court sends the summons and warrants to the criminals or not yes sir do they examine them or not you might have seen that in the movies uh geeta pe haath rakh ke jo bolunga sach bolunga sach ke subah kuch nahi bolunga like that red color book and all oath they have to take right one person on the left side one person on the right side and nfra is also like this only same powers what the civil court is having the same powers having given to whom nfra yes. is it clear ma so read this point yes. what is written while filing a suit it has powers of a civil court under ccp 1908 like ccp is the civil code of uh, civil uh, code of criminal procedure code of criminal procedure 1908 like in the criminal courts do we have one judge or not yes, yes in the nfra that chairman is a judge like we go in the court and whether the case is being handled in our court or not yes in the same way the case will be handled here as well are you getting the point so nfra is not less than a court is it clear amma yes read it amma next point what nfra can do discovery production of books of account if the nfra wants if the nfra wants it can tell any company any chartered accountant to produce the books of accounts at any place or at any time whatever who will decide nfra so is it a nfra is very powerful body right what is the next thing nfra will do summoning and enforcing the attendance if the nfra will send you the notice do you can you ignore the notice of nfra or you have to go there you have to go there and give your what attendance are you getting the one next one can nfra examine you on oath like a movies yes. by putting a hand on geeta and they will tell you say the truth and all those things whether the nfra can do that yes nfra can do that also what is the next power of nfra 
inspection of any books registered or document yes next one examination of witness or document now do you know that in the uh, court sometimes the witnesses will come and some uh, advocate will be there and he will be examining those witnesses same thing who where it will happen it will also happen in the nfra case also so nfra has the same powers of which court amma civil yes, court sir. so what are the two special powers of nfra we understood power to investigate and the second one is what powers of which court civil court civil. right next point read the point number c amma power to impose penalty, penalty. now listen do you know power to investigate which we have, which we have done first power now umel say for example you are the nfra chairman am i correct my grower and associates my chartered accountancy firm the case you are handling am i correct yes sir now after doing the investigation you found grower and associates to be guilty am i correct yes sir now listen how much penalty you can put on me see if i am individual auditor if i am a sole proprietorship firm if i am a which firm amma sole proprietorship if i am a single chartered accountant who is involved in that fraud which you have investigated then my minimum fine is how much amma 1 lakh or five times the fee received from my client how much amma minimum 1 lakh maximum how much five times five the times the fees if it is a individual chartered accountant now what is on the other side amma in case of firm suppose if the rohit grower sir is getting penalized then this will be the penalty 1 lakh or 5 times uh, 1 lakh minimum and maximum 5 times of the fees received but if my firm is getting penalized then what is the minimum penalty minimum 5 lakh maximum 10 times of the 10 times of the fee who is imposing this penalty nfra is imposing the penalty on whom on the chartered accountants is it clear amma yes sir and not only that what is written this plus you will be banned from doing a practice under the chartered accountant act 1949 for minimum how many months 6 months maximum 10 years. years is it clear amma you will be banned you will be completely banned you will be prohibited from practicing you can't run your office for the minimum 6 months maximum what 10 years have you ever seen this kind of penalty on chartered accountants nfra is a very revolutionary step taken under the company act section number 132 so remember one thing you dare to do a fraud today who is watching you always nfra and if the nfra will conduct the investigation and it if it is proved in the investigation ki you have actually done a fraud and it is proved that ki you were a fraudulent chartered accountant then in that case what is the penalty amma if i am an individual fraudulent person minimum 1 lakh maximum 5 times the fee received and minimum ban of how many months 6 months and maximum ban of 10 years yeah. what do you mean by ban amma can i do my practice or can't do can i can i run my practice or i am banned from I running can't. it i can't run my practice at all is it clear amma yes and what is the form penalty read what is the form penalty what is the form penalty minimum 5 lakhs minimum 5 lakhs maximum 10 times of the fees received and same ban of minimum 6 months and maximum 10 years everyone will write cc in the comment box if you all understood everything about the nfra so far quickly quickly we have to finish up all these four sections today jaldi jaldi reply me <coughs> yeah crystal clear okay now now let's say for example grower and associates or rohit grower sir is not satisfied with the order of whom nfra umel you passed an order as an nfra but i am not satisfied with mm -hmm. the order now when we are not satisfied with the high court order do we file an appeal to supreme court or not yes or no everyone yes, when we are not satisfied with the high court order do we go to supreme court or not yes, yes sir here also we are doing the same thing i'm not satisfied with the order of nfra then i can make make an appeal where ama ncl 
AT. Now, what is NCL AT? NCL National AT. Company Law Appellate Tribunal. What is the full form of NCL AT, Emma? The full form of NCL, T, NCL AT is National Company Law Appellate Authority. Appellate Tribunal. Mm -hmm. Appellate yeah. Tribunal. Is it clear, Amma? Yes. So, this is what all about NFRA you all should know. Is it clear to all of you? Everything about the NFRA you all understood? Yes or no, everyone? So, this is what brings an end to your section number 132, which talks about what? NFRA, right? Now, remaining, what is the residual procedure left? NFRA, how many meetings where it can conduct? NFRA can conduct any meeting at any place. Is it clear, Umel? It can conduct any meetings at any places. Next point. Now, can the NFRA have some additional employees for the efficient performance of its work? Answer is yes. Additional employees can be appointed, but those also will be appointed by whom? Central government. Where is the head office of the NFRA? The head office of the NFRA is Delhi, everyone, but it can meet at any other places wherever they want. Next point. Who will prepare the books of accounts of NFRA? Now, Umel, please tell me, do you remember C and AG I shown you while making you understand IEPF in the dividend chapter? Shri, Shri Girish Kumar Murmu, Comptroller and Auditor General of India. Do you all remember I shown you the C and AG of India? Correct, Nachla. So I shown you the C and AG of India. At that point of time, I told you he does the audit of government entities. Am I correct? Now NFRA is also which entity? NFRA is also which entity? Government entity. So who will do the audit of? Who will prepare the books of NFRA? The audit and books of the NFRA will be prepared by whom? C and AG, Comptroller and Auditor General of India. Is it correct, Umel? Yes or no? Next one. What is the annual report? Yes, sir. Now, what is the annual report? Now, see, once the and once the books of accounts of NFRA are prepared, once the audit of NFRA is done, then books of accounts and audit of NFRA will be put in front of both houses of parliament. What do you mean by both houses of parliament? Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. And once the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha will pass it, after that only NFRA audit will get what? Completed. So this is what all about NFRA you should know. So shall we do the quick revision everyone? Are you ready to write the answers in the comment box? Section number 132. Now everyone please tell me NFRA is a filter between whom and whom? It is a filter between whom and whom? And it is a mediator between whom and whom? Tell me, tell me quickly, quickly. Yes, ICA and MCA. Next one. Does it take care of our accounting standards and auditing standards now? Yes. Does it take care of our accounting standards and auditing standards now? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Now tell me, NFRA, mein how many members are there? 16. 16 members. One is the chairperson and 15 are what? Part-time and whole-time members. Now, who all these members are appointed by whom? All these members are appointed by whom? Central, Central government. government. Which government, everyone? Central government appoints it. Right or not? Next point. Do they have to file the declaration of sol uh, declaration of independence? Yes, they have to file the declaration of independence. Next point. Okay. Uh, yeah. What are the powers to the NFRA? Power to investigate, power to impose a penalty, and at the same point of time, what is the fifth power, fourth, third power, everyone? Power to investigate, power to impose penalty, and powers of civil court judge. Am I correct, everyone? Yes. Next point. Okay. Uh, do you have to maintain independence only during the employment or after leaving the employment also? You have to maintain the independence after leaving the employment for how many years next to Arunachalam? You don't have to two establish years. the relationship? Two years. Two years. Right or not? What is the penalty uh, 
NFRA can impose if individual chartered accountant is found guilty of professional misconduct or other misconduct? Minimum one lakh maximum. And ban from the uh, how many uh, how many years ban? <laughs> minimum six <laughs> months years. maximum ten years. Right. And if it is a firm of auditors, minimum if it is a firm of auditors, minimum five lakhs maximum, ten times of the audit fees received, and the ban is same six months to ten years. I hope all of you understood everything about the NFRA, everyone. Yes. Yes. Sir. Now the next very 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 small section that is called one thirty three. I did not make you write one thirty three. Because it is not required to be written, it's a very small section. So everyone, please read what is one thirty three. Very simple. Now let me tell you one thing. What is one thirty three saying? Amma, please read what is one thirty three's heading. Just read the heading. Central government to prescribe what accounting, accounting standards. standards. Now listen to this point very, 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 very carefully. This section is saying that if before NFRA, there used to be one. Authority called NACAS. What was the name of the authority, Emma? NACAS. NACAS. It was after NFRA or before NFRA? Before NFRA. Now, what was the full form of NACAS, Emma? Read it for everyone. What is the full form of NACAS? National Advisory Committee on Accounting Standards. Now, tell me, are you able to see any auditing standards were written over here? No, sir. So it was a complete body or it was an incomplete body. Incomplete. So what happened? Nakas got replaced by whom? NFRA. Mm -hmm. So what is the new name, everyone? National Financial Reporting Authority. This is this is the new version of the old body called what? Nakas. Is it clear, everyone? Yes. Now. Central government says that ki there are two types of accounting standards which are going on in India. Now tell me one thing: at the intermediate level, are you following INDS or you all are following AS right now? Ah, uh, in the final when you will reach, in the final you will do what? INDS. Am I correct, Amma? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now why you are doing both? Now see in India. Some companies are following in India. Some yeah. companies are following AS, and some companies are following Indians. Are you getting the yeah. point? In India, some companies are following AS, and some companies are following what? Indians. They are saying that yeah. those companies which are following AS, that is AS one to AS twenty nine, they have to be. They should be following. Companies Accounting Standard Rules 2006, but those companies which are started following NDS, those companies which are following NDS, they have to follow Rule Number Four of NDS Rules 2015. This is only Section Number 133. So, did you understand what is 133 saying? Two things. First of all, what is the first thing? 133 saying, Umail, that NACAS is replaced by NFRA. Am I correct? Yes, so what is the NACAS ka full form was what? National Advisory Committee on Accounting Standards. Now it is replaced by National Financial Reporting Authority. The second declaration, which the section number one thirty three says that if there are two types of companies in India which are following the different different standards. Some companies are following what? Accounting yes. standards, and some companies are following what? India. That's the reason you are doing both. So accounting standards you are doing at intermediate level. And NDS, you are doing it at going to do at mm -hmm. final level. Is it clear, Amma? Yes. So, what are the two sections we are done with so far? One thirty-two and one thirty-three. Now, what are the two sections we are left with, Amma? Section number one thirty-five and one thirty-seven. Is it clear, Amma? With that, our one to section number one thirty-seven will be over. So in the company law, we will be only left with eleven sections. What are the eleven sections we will be left with, Amma? One thirty-eight to one forty-eight, and this one we are going to do in one chapter called A and A. What is A and A? Audit and auditors. So I had a word with the sir. Now uh, he told me that I can continue with the audit and auditors. So we will continue also. Okay.
तो वी विल कंटिन्यू ओके तो वी विल कंटिन्यू ए एंड ए ऑडिट एंड ऑडिट इज चैप्टर बट टुमारो आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट फर्स्ट बिकॉज इट्स बिन सो लॉन्ग वी हैव नॉट स्टार्टेड अवर अदर लॉस तो फर्स्ट टुमारो आई विल स्टार्ट विद कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट डे आफ्टर टुमारो कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट विल बी ओवर आई यू गेटिंग द पॉइंट then i will do interpretation of statutes one day and then i will do uh, general clauses act so in the by the time friday will come you we should be complete with the three topics of our out of four topics of our other laws so we'll be left with one very huge chapter called negotiable instrument act in the other laws and one chapter in the company law that is called audit and auditors is it clear to all of you after that we'll plan sunday sunday classes okay after that we'll plan sunday to sunday classes is it clear to all of you because i don't want to take you that much of time on daily basis so we will plan sunday sunday classes or if the sir will allow i will take some extra days also no problem now shall we start with the section number 137 yes now what is the name of the section amma filing financial statements with whom roc now you all have to be with me in this section now what is they saying that what is this section is saying that everyone first of all tell me up to section number 133 everyone is clear is it clear to all of you section number 133 up to that yes, yes. now umyal what is section number we are doing now 137 it is very much similar to the section number what 92 which we have already done called annual returns do you remember that now see annual return section says that ki from the date of agm from the date of agm within 60 days from the date of agm within how many days 60, 60. days one copy of annual return is to be filed with whom amma roc in form number mgt7 if you all remember plus mgt8 that is a compliance certificate issued by the practicing ca do you all agree with that yes, yes. now 137 says that ki from the date of agm from the date of agm within 30 days within how many days 30 days we have to file aoc4 form number what is aoc4 aoc4 stands for adopted financial statements copy what is a aoc4 amma adopted financial statements copy we have to file AOC four form number within thirty days from the date of AGM again with whom ROC. Now my question is very simple, Amma. Out of section number ninety two and one thirty seven, which one we are filing first? Tell me. One thirty seven we are filing first. Am I correct, Amma? Because one thirty seven says that within how many days we have to file it? 30 days within 30 days and what is 92 is saying within how many days we have to file this one 60 days so tell me which one we are filing first financial 30. statements copy we are filing first now read the name of the section amma what is 137 saying what is the name of the section 30. filing of financial, financial statements with ROC. with roc now read this provision what does it say every company within 30 days of its agm shall file copy of adopted financial statement with roc so we have to file it within how many days within 30 days from the date of agm with whom roc in form number what aoc4 now listen to this if you are filing listen to this everyone very carefully if you are filing your own financial statement means my stand alone financial statement then the form number is amma aoc4 but do you remember holding company has a responsibility of only filing its own or also has a responsibility of consolidated financial statement consolidated so when the holding company will be filing the consolidated financial statement with roc then what will be the form number amma aoc cfs so what is cfs stands for consolidated financial statement see form number is same in between we have added word cfs and if you are a listed yes. company if you are a which company amma listed company then you have to file the aoc4 form number but in a format of in a format of xbrl format what is the name of the format amma yes. and what is the 
full form of XBRL, extensible business reporting language. What is the full form of XBRL? Extensible business reporting language. If you are a which company, Amma? So tell me, if you are you are filing your own standalone, what is the form number? AOC four. If it is a consolidated, what is the form number? AOC CFS four. And if you are a listed, what is the form number? AOC XBRL four. What is the form number? AOC XBRL. And what is the full form of XBRL? Extensible Business Reporting Language. It is a special kind of format which you all have to follow. Is it clear, Amma? Yes. But nowadays it is not only for listed companies. XBRL is applicable on listed companies as well as their subsidiary. Yes, it is applicable on listed companies as well as their subsidiaries subsidiary. and their subsidiary. Am I clear, Amma? Next one. Those companies whose paid up share capital is greater than equals to five crore. Those companies whose turnover is greater than equals to and those companies whose financial statements are prepared as per what? India. India. They all have to mandatorily file their financial statement copy in which form number? AOC XBRL4. So earlier it was only and only applicable to the listed entities. But now listed as well as their subsidiaries. Companies whose paid up share capital is greater than equals to? 5 crore. Companies whose turnover are greater than equals to 100 crores. And companies which are following the financial statements prepared as per NDS, they all have to follow in the XBRL format only. Is it crystal clear? Yes, sir. Yes. But these companies are exempted. Which companies? Banking companies, electricity companies, insurance companies, NBFC companies, Housing finance company. So tell me, Amma, which companies are exempted from XBRL format? Banking, electric. Now listen to this. What is what is the reason? Banking companies are followed or regulated under which act? Banking Regulation Act. Insurance companies are regulated under which act? Insurance Act. Electricity companies are regulated under Electricity Act. NBFCs are regulated under RBA Act. Housing finance companies are regulated under National Housing Board. So tell me, are they regulated under Company Act or somewhere else? Regulated under Mother Act. Under their Mother Act. So tell me, they will follow Company Act or their Mother Act then? Their Mother Act. So that's why we have exempted them from Company Act. Is it clear, Amma? Logic, so much, Yes, sir. So tell me, which one are exempted list? Let's Banking. write it again. Well, exempted list, my first one. Banking, Banking, insurance, electricity, electricity, NBFC, NBFC, housing, and housing finance company. Is it clear, ma? So <laughs> these are the five companies which are exempted from where? These are the companies which are exempted from filing which format? XBRL format. Matlab, they need not file their financial statements here. They have to file their financial statement somewhere else. Is it clear, Amma? Yes, sir. Yes. Under there. So, did you understand section number 137? What is 137 says that every company without fail within 30 days from its AGM must file the AOC 4 adopted financial statement copy from the date of AGM with ROC. Am I correct? If you are yes. filing your standalone AOC 4, if you are filing CFS, then AOC CFS 4. But if you are a listed company, and a company whose paid up share capital is 5 crores or more, and a company whose turnover is 100 crores or more, and a company whose financial statements are prepared as per IND, AS, and these companies have to follow what? X XBRL X format. XBRL ka full form, extensible business reporting language. But if you are a banking, insurance, electricity, NBFC, and HFC company, you are exempted from it. Is it clear to all? Right. Yes, Problem comes when, Amma, there are total three situations we have to understand. First of all, please tell me, Amma, these 30 days are starting from where? These 30 days are starting from the date of AGM. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Now, look at the case number one. Just read the case number one for all of us. AGM held plus 
financial statement are after now agm was held as planned and financial statements were adopted, adopted. everything went smooth amma yes sir so what is going what we are going to do file the copy of adopted financial statement with roc within how many days 30 days, 30 days of, of agm this is the case number 1 when everything is super fine am i correct now look at the case number 2 what is the case number 2 agm held but what happened financial statements were not adopted agm held but financial statements were not, not adopted. adopted now who is angry roc am i correct now roc said that if agm held but you have not adopted your what financial statement so financial roc statement. is telling to the company that if first file with me unadopted financial statement copy within how many days 30 days of agm so roc is saying first file which one unadopted okay. copies of financial statement with roc within how many days 30 days and now in the next meeting in the adjourned meeting are we going to adopt it again now see okay. in the agm we adopted or did not adopt did not so roc is saying that no problem first file which class which financial statement with me unadopted and now in the next general meeting may are we going to adopt it now because it was unfinished work was it finished in the agm or unfinished tell me amma adoption took place in the agm or did not take place did not take place so it is finished task or unfinished unfinished unish finished so arunachalam please tell me are we going to conduct another meeting to adopt our financial statements now yes so now in that meeting when the financial statements will be adopted the roc is demanding again the copy within 30 days from that meeting in which that financial statements are adopted is it clear umel is it clear umel you didn't understand if not understand no problem tell no problem i will repeat it again is it so amma yes sir yeah now listen umel you are abc limited am i correct in your abc limited in the agm one of the ordinary business is to adopt the financial statement am i correct yes, once it is adopted within 30 days we have to file this copy with whom okay. roc am i correct now umel imagine that in your company what happened agm held agm held but financial statements are adopted or not adopted okay i say wants uh, uh, roc wants which one unadopted or adopted adopted roc generally wants which one adopted adopted but in your agm it was adopted or unadopted unadopted matlab no shareholder has adopted this financial statement so far so is it finished or unfinished task unfinished so are we going to conduct another general meeting in few weeks and we are going to adopt it then later yes so roc is saying that ki if it is not adopted in the agm don't worry first file with me the which copy first file with the roc which copy unadopted within how many days now tell me are we going to conduct another meeting where we will adopt again then again file the copy of adopted financial statement within 30 days from the meeting where it was adopted am i clear so now basically ic uh, roc is asking one time or two times now two times first one is unadopted and second one is what adopted adopted crystal clear now yes now umer please read the third case what happened agm has not been held now in the case number 1 agm held financial statement adopted it was very smooth in the case number 2 agm held but financial statements were not adopted little bit problem we got but what is the third worst case what agm is has not agm been has not been held matlab agm was conducted or not conducted okay. so now what to do how the roc is saying that file the copy of financial statement with roc within 30 days from the maximum date on which agm shall be conducted can you please tell me agm ka rules everyone 
Arunachalam, please tell me what are the rules of AGM? Gap between the two meetings shall not be more than what? 15 months. Am I correct, Umel? Umel, correct? Yes. Next one, one AGM in every calendar year. And within six months from the end of financial year. Can you, can you remember both of you and please tell me what was the maximum date we had always in our answer? Was it the maximum date 31, 12 of every year? Yes. So ROC says that whether AGM is conducted or not conducted, I need the financial statements with me within how many days? 30. But these 30 days will start from when am I? These 30 days will start from the maximum day on which AGM could have been held. And what is that maximum day indirectly? Because we need one AGM in every calendar year. Am I correct, Amma? Now see, read this whole line. I am underlining. Read it. File the copy of financial statement with ROC within 30 days from the maximum date on which AGM should have been Held. Held. Plus, Plus, along uh, with it, attach the reasons of non holding of it. ROC saying that I want the reasons also ki why you as a company was unable to hold your what? AGM. But now tell me one thing you are supposed to now tell me everyone AGM is a mandatory meeting or optional meeting? Mandatory. So if you are not conducting a meeting, whether the ROC deserves to know the reasons for that or not? ROC deserves to know the reasons why you are not conducting AGM. Am I correct or not? So ROC is asking you that only. First of all, file with me the financial statement copy within 30 days. And along with that, please also give me the reasons why you did not conduct the AGM. Did you all understand these three cases, everyone? Okay. Write in the comment box, CC, if you all understood. Let me know whether you understood or not. All the cases understood. <clears throat> quickly, quickly, everyone. Waiting, waiting. Hey, waiting, Baba. Quickly, quickly. Yeah. Okay, great. So, this what brings an end to section number 137. But yes, 137 also brings with its surprise. That is what penalty on non compliance of. 137. 137. Now look at the penalty, Amma. What is the penalty on the company if they do not file the financial statement with the ROC? 1000 rupees per day of default subject to the maximum of what? 10 lakh. And what is the penalty on officers in default? 1 lakh. Plus 100 rupees per day subject to the maximum of? 5, 5 lakhs. So company ka hai 1000 rupees per day subject to the maximum of? 10 lakhs. 5. And officers in default ka 1 lakh plus 100 rupees per day subject to the maximum of 5 lakhs. Is it clear to all of you? Yes or no? Yes, sir. So with this, our how many sections are over, Amma? Our 132 is over, 133 is over, 137 is over, 128 we already did, 129 we did, 130 we did. 131 we did, 134 also we did, 136 we also did, and just now we have completed 137. Yeah. So now only one section is left, I think 135, the most important section and the most amended section. Is it clear everyone? Shall we start?